dear students today we will be discussing about biomass power generation so today's discussion primarily restricted on biomass energy scenario and biomass resources and understanding of different routes of biomass conversions so before we start our discussion let us learn the energy distribution or energy mix in global and indian perspective as you can see the contribution comes from different uh, sources it may be renewable or non renewable in both the situations but what we can see primarily most of the energy is coming from the fossil fuels which includes oil gas and other element like coal extracted from the mother earth and also we can see the share of renewable energy if we consider last 20 years it is really encouraging the share of renewable energy in the energy mix in both global and national context so as our discussion is on biomass conversion or you can say bioenergy hence we will be more emphasizing on bioenergy share in the energy mix so as of 2020 less than 3% of installed generation capacity in india came from biomass power cogeneration and waste to energy projects and as far as biofuel demand growth is concern and projection in 2022 to 2024 nearly two third of biofuel demand growth will occur in emerging economies like india brazil and indonesia so all three countries have ample domestic feedstocks and policies in all three countries are also rooted in energy security considerations as greater biofuel use will offset some oil imports we can see here ethanol biofuel renewable diesel then biojet fuel okay this is advanced economies and emerging economics you can see like ethanol biodiesel renewable diesel and biojet fuels okay this color code indicates the countries and uh, vertical axis shows million liter per year okay so if you see this is for united states for renewable diesel and this part is for united states okay and dark blue is canada and rest is europe but here you can see emerging economies indonesia india and others okay so that's how emphasis in these countries are very very high and people are looking for extracting energy from biomass resources so if we talk about india's bioenergy production potential like different parameters and then we can quantify it like power generation potential it is estimated that annual power generation potential of 208 billion units from 20 gigawatt installation and additional bagas based cogeneration plants annual power generation potential will be about 65 billion units that means 65 into 10 to the power of 9 units one unit is 1 kilowatt hour and uh, we can also consider bioethanol production from agri waste so if we consider sugar cane then you can see like about 9523 almost kiloliter per day then molasses is 24843 kiloliter per day and then other class of molasses like c 
it is about 13,309 kiloliter per day. And from rice also we have this much quantities of bioethanol we can produce and again from maize and we have compressed biogas production potential from kettle dung is about 30,981 ton per day then municipal solid waste then from paddies okay and also if we see the roles of bioenergy in different sectors like if we classify three different sectors electricity transportation and overall fuel and heat consumption so it is something like electricity is 2.9 percent transportation 1 percent and overall fuel and heat consumption it is about 43.7 percent by 2021. Now let us learn the different schemes initiated by the government as far as use of biomass. So 5 percent co-firing of biomass along with coal in thermal power plant is encouraged. Then use of compressed biogas in transportation sector. Then scheme to support promotion of biomass based cogeneration in sugar mills. Then pellet manufacturing which can be used in many of the applications and that was a big that was very very encouraged to curb stubble burning in Punjab, Haryana, Rajasthan, Uttar Pradesh and Delhi which is a big problem after harvesting paddies. Then amendment of national policy on biofuels in 2018 following more feedstocks for production of biofuels and 20 percent blendings of ethanol in petrol in coming years and schemes to support manufacturing of briquettes and pellets and biomass which is non bagas best co-generation in industries. Now let us learn what is bioenergy or biomass energy. Biomass is renewable organic material that comes from plants and animals. Biomass contains stored chemical energy from the sun that is produced by plants through photosynthesis process. Biomass can be burned directly to generate heat or converted to liquid or gaseous fuels through various processes. We will be studying those processes and also we will elaborate how those processes can be applied for generation of electricity. In general, in the photosynthesis process, this plants what you can see here converts radiant energy from sun into chemical energy in the form of glucose or sugars. So, it is something like we have water vapor in the atmosphere and then carbon dioxide and when solar radiation falls on the plants this converts glucose and oxygen right. Normally what happens when solar radiation incident on the plants and other photosynthetic or photosynthetic organisms they perform two basic functions. First one is the temperature control, temperature control for chemical reaction in green plants which is known as photosynthesis. So, it, it has two basic functions temperature control for chemical reactions to proceeds and number two is the photosynthesis process. So, in general what we can write it is something like x CO2 plus y H 2 O then we have light energy this is light source 
which is coming from the sun, then we have photosynthesis. Then what we will get this is X of oxygen, then we have C Y, this is C X. This is the general expression and this indicates the carbohydrate and normally in this reactions about 5 electron volt per carbon atom of energy is generated. Okay? And also we can learn both the processes like when we are talking about photosynthesis at the same time we must mention about respiration. So, both photosynthesis and respiration takes place in day times, but at night times only respiration takes place. Okay? Also we can think of combustion as well. So, we have carbon dioxide and H2O and then light energy and what we are getting oxygen and this carbohydrate. Right, So, this is photosynthesis. Also, if we think of reverse reaction, then it looks something like this. So, here we can replace this light source is something like del Q. Okay. So, what is del Q? Del Q is the enthalpy sense. So, this is enthalpy sense of combustion process, which is nothing but the energy absorbed from the photons of solar radiation minus the energy respiration during growth. So, normally this value is about 4.5 electron volt per carbon atom. Okay? And it is approximately equal to 470 kilojoule per mole of carbon or we can say 16 megajoule per kg of dry carbohydrate material. But we must know this combustion is always takes place at very high temperature. Okay? It may be around more than 300, 400, okay? but the respiration takes place at 20 degree Celsius plus minus maybe 5 degree Celsius. Okay? So, this is uh, what happens when solar radiation falls on plants and what finally we get is glucose which is stored in the plant and that may be applied in different forms. So, the average efficiency of photosynthesis conversion of solar energy into biomass energy is about 0.5 to 1 percent. Because when solar radiation falls, some radiation will be reflected, some will be transmitted, some will be absorbed. So, absorbed component is very, very less, but that is sufficient to provide all kind of energies to the living things in the mother earth. It is estimated that 90 percent of the plant matter which is biomass is equivalent to the current proven extractable fossil fuel reserve in the world. Okay? Now, let us see what are the different usable forms of biomass. It may be wood logs or fuel woods. We can cut the woods and we can use it for different applications. It may be pellets or briquettes. So, what is the difference between pellets and briquettes? Briquettes are of higher dimensions, but pellets are of smaller in dimensions and all the agricultural waste we can make pellets by using a pelletizer. Okay? And we have circles. So, in the pellets we can add circles as well to augment the calorific value of the fuel. So, we can think of 
the applications and that way we can make the products and also we can have liquid fuels like biodiesels or maybe bioethanol and also we have gaseous fuels like biogas or producer gas so this biogas is a composition of methane and carbon dioxide primarily of course we will have some amount of hydrogen sulfide and water vapor so in order to use for electricity generation then this hydrogen sulfide and uh, other particulate matters need to be removed and producer gas is a composition of carbon monoxide and hydrogen primarily of course methane percentage small percentage of methane is also present in the producer gas so let us also learn the calorific values of all those fuels which can be used directly like wood its calorific value varies from 14.4 to 17.4 charcoal varies from 29 to about 32 megajoule per kg biogas is from 17 to 23.5 megajoule per kg because if we change the feedstock its properties will change accordingly what happens its calorific value will change and as i said before this biogas is a compost of methane and carbon dioxide if we purify the biogas that means if we reduce the percentage of carbon dioxide then we can augment its calorific value or energy value that's how this variation is there and biodiesel uh, sometimes we can resemble with petroleum diesel it is 36 to 40 megajoule per kg and uh, ethanol is about 26 to 29 megajoule per kg producer gas is about 5 to 9 megajoule per kg again in case of producer gas we can augment the values of producer gas by purifying it and promoting water gas friction so that we can get more hydrogen so if you can produce more hydrogen then we can have higher calorie value and briquettes calorie value varies from 14 to 22 megajoule per kg what are different uh, biomass resources we have forestry crops and residues agricultural crops and residues and animal residues aquatic plants energy crops so we can produce sugars ethanol biodiesel then urban waste so it's a combustion we can generate heat and that heat can be utilized for generation of electricity then sewage again we can treat well sewage and produce biogas and which can be again further converted to electricity by using engine generator assembly and industrial residues means we have classified waste so we need to decide which way we can use it if we have sufficient forestry residues and agricultural waste then we can go for gasifications so this can be used as fuel maybe we can use directly in the powder form or maybe we can use it briquettes for fuel in the gasifier to produce electricity if we have animal residues and aquatic plants then we can use those as a feedstocks to the anaerobic digester for generation of biogas and further we can generate electricity also we can see how these energy crops can be used for generation of say sugars or other byproducts if we have sugar cane we can take it to sugar mills because first of course we need to farm it then crushing is done then we can extract juice that is sugar cane juice and then bagas the juice part is called juice and then the residual part is known as bagas and this bagas can be burned in power plants to generate heat and again we can produce electricity and then this juice we can convert to molasses and this can be directly sell and also we can distill it 
we can produce ethanol or alcohol and that can be used as industrial alcohol. And other part is filter mode and sugar we have in one side and filter mode is another side from where we can have fertilizers, animal feed and cane wax. And sometimes we can use some of the byproducts as cement particle board. So, you can see from sugar can you can have multiple products. Okay? So, that way we can design what kind of products are required and what are the resources available that way we can use the appropriate process and do the needful. So, this is an example of utilizing one kind of biomass for different applications. So, from sugar can to sugar then fertilizer, animal feed, cane wax, alcohol then some kind of energy generation. Now, we will discuss the different conversion route from biomass to electricity. So, primarily we have two classes like thermochemical conversion and biochemical conversion. Of course, we have extraction like if we have non edible oil seeds from that we can extract oil and that can be used for power generation. So, under thermochemical conversion we will have combustion, gasification and pyrolysis. So, now if we are talking about combustion then what happens we will provide sufficient oxidizer to combust all the element presence in the fuel and we produce steam. Once we produce steam then we can use the steam for running a steam turbine and then from that we can generate electricity or if we want heat then that can be used in separate unit. Okay? Because most of the cases in industries they need process heat. So, that heat can also be extracted by using this process of combustion. Right? So, that is how it is saying it is heat and then other part is electricity. Now, if we consider gasification, what is gasification? Here we are not allowing all the elements to burn completely, it is a partial oxidation because our target is to generate carbon monoxide and hydrogen. Okay? So, once we generate it then we can use it for power generation here for electricity or we can combust it in IGCC that is integrated gasification and combined cycle or maybe we can use this fuel as gas turbine fuel gas turbine fuel. Okay? Or if we want conversion of gaseous fuel to liquid fuel then we can go for a technology called Fischer trop technology. There we can convert the gaseous fuel into liquid fuel because in transportation it is very difficult to carry the gaseous fuel. So, we want liquid fuel, but the process is somewhat expensive to produce liquid fuel from gaseous fuel. So, that is how we can say we can use it as fuel, it is a liquid fuel you can transport it which can be applied in a downstream process or maybe any other applications. And in pyrolysis we will have gas, oil and charcoal, if we use biomass then it will be biochar. Okay? So, if we have gas then that gas can be burned in combustion chamber of gas turbine, so we can generate electricity out of it. And if we condense the gas and uh, we get some kind of oil and that oil can be upgraded to use as diesel like fuel or use in a diesel engine right? or maybe we can blend it with diesel fuel. So, then this can be considered as fuel and once we have biochar this has got plenty of applications. We can use it for burning or we can use it as fuel or there are other applications as well. Now, if we talk about biochemical conversion primarily we have two process under this scheme digestion and fermentation. When we are talking about digestion 
we can produce biogas and that can also be used in the combustion chamber of a gas turbine where you can generate heat and then produce electricity or directly we can supply to the gas engine to produce electricity and also this can be used as fuel and for fermentation we have to go for distillation for production of ethanol. So ethanol is also a fuel and also we can use it for other applications. When we are talking about extraction like if we have biofuel plants from there we will get seeds and that seeds has to be crushed to produce oil and the process by which we produce biodiesel is known as transesterification and then we can blend with diesel to produce electricity. So that's how it is fuel and also we can generate electricity right and byproduct of this is glycerol here okay so that could be an another applications. So here primarily it is shown like no the fuel for electricity generation on thermal applications. So our discussion will be primarily on thermochemical conversion and biochemical conversion. Of course, we will touch how this biodiesel can be produced. So we have to discuss something about waste to energy conversion because in urban areas we generate lot of waste. So this waste to energy is a term that is used to describe various technologies that converts non-recyclable waste into usable forms of energy including heat, fuel and electricity. So you can see this incineration plant, we have waste then resource recovery will be there, then we have residential waste, then energy from waste facility, so we have heat and electricity. So normally it is done by combustion of organic waste and then the heat what we generate while doing the combustion process is used to generate steam so that that can be expanded in a turbine to generate electricity. Also we have sewage to energy conversion. So once we have sewage that is collected then that can be stored in a airtight construction chamber known as anaerobic digester where microbials activity will be performed to generate methane and carbon dioxide. So that is known as biogas and then we can purify it and maybe we can compress it and we can give the energy to the natural gas powered vehicles or that kind of applications. And also we can use part of the gas for hydrothermal applications and also it will give good quality fertilizer. So that is how we can use sewage for energy and value added product generation. So biochemical conversion entails breaking down of biomass to make the hydrocarbons available for processing into sugars which can then be converted into biofuels and bioproducts through the use of microorganisms and catalyst. That is how it is said ethanol is produced by the action of microorganisms on carbohydrates and these carbohydrates or saccharides can be classified into three major groups monosaccharide, oligosaccharide and polysaccharides. When we talk about monosaccharide it is something like glucose and fructose. This is nothing but simple hydrocarbons which cannot be hydrolyzed into simpler compounds. And example of oligosaccharides are sucrose and maltose and 
polysaccharides are starch and cellulose. So, here high molecular mass carbohydrates which yield a large number of monosaccharides molecules on hydrolysis. So, how we can produce biomass to ethanol? We can have lignocellulosic biomass, then engineered biomass that means high cellulose and hemicellulose content biomass we need to produce. Then we need to do some kind of treatment, then we will go for enzymatic hydrolysis and then we will have advanced fermentation and then what we will get is the bioethanol and that can be given to the gas station or petrol depots. That will be like blended fuel as of now in India. And this is the equations where we can get uh, glucose. So, this C12 H22O11 is nothing but sucrose which will react with water vapor and it will produce or water it will produce glucose and then glucose fermentation takes place it produce ethanol and carbon dioxide. For biodiesel, biodiesel is a more complex fuel than bioethanol and it is a mixture of esters of fatty acids that differ in chain length and saturation level. The most suitable triglyceride feedstock for biodiesel production should have a same length between C14 to C22 and low saturation level. And transesterification is the most commonly used reaction to convert oil what is extracted from the seed to biodiesel. So, this is the pathways we have transesterification process fat and waste will come here and then catalyst will have to be added and of course, we need to recover the catalyst and then what we will get is the crude oil and the other side is glycerin and once we refine it. So, it is like biodiesel and uh, you can see different feedstock which can be used for production of biodiesel here. It may be microbial oil or microalgae based diesel, then the animal fats, non edible oils here, then edible oils. Okay. So, these all feedstocks can be used for generation of biodiesel to produce electricity. And again, we can go for biomass to biogas, which is done primarily in anaerobic digestion. That means, no air is used while decomposing the organic matter, but the digester has to be full of microbial organisms or microorganisms to convert the organic matter into biogas. So, process is shown something like this, this kind of things like livestock or cattle dung, crops, then wastewater, then food waste which can be added in the anaerobic digester and what we will get, we will get biogas which can be directly used for cooking by heating and producing electricity and also once we purify it which will be more or less natural gas, more than 99 percent methane will be there and that can be bottled and transported and maybe power to the vehicles or gas grid. And we can produce a very good fertilizer out of this biogas conversion process or biomass to biogas process. So, this can be very good organic fertilizer. And primarily this biogas composed of 50 to 70 percent methane and 25 to 40 percent carbon dioxide 
of course, some amount of nitrogen, hydrogen, H 2 S and oxygen will be present. These are in trace quantities. We will discuss now about thermochemical conversion of biomass. The thermochemical conversion involves biomass structure decomposition or degradation with oxygenic or anoxygenic atmosphere at high temperature. It includes three kinds of technology mainly gasification, pyrolysis and direct liquefaction. So, these are the feedstocks we can say plastic may be coal, municipal solid waste or biomass. We can maintain certain temperature and heating rate, then we can produce what is called crude oil by using pyrolysis process and gaseous product primarily in case of gasification process. And product of pyrolysis is like oil, then char and then tar, which is a very long chain liquid hydrocarbon and from gas we can produce electricity primarily and if we want to produce liquid fuels then we can have a very good condenser there we can condense the gaseous products into liquids and then finally we can upgrade the fuels to be used in compression ignition engines for power generation and this is pyrolysis setup so in pyrolysis setup we, we can provide heat then feedstock and the inert gas because this happens in absence of air but we need to provide inert gas then in the pyrolysis process we will get biochar then gas that is the condense once we condense it then what we will get is bio oil ok. So, bio oil looks something like this you can package it and you can sell it. So, as far as stages of gasification are concerned we have four stages drying, pyrolysis, combustion and reduction. So, you can see the things what is happening when we are say drying water will be removed, pyrolysis we can have charcoal and tar and in combustion we can produce H2O and carbon dioxide because in case of gasifier first we need to combust it so that we can provide enough heat for gasification and reduction will have hydrogen and carbon monoxide. So, in gasification process which converts lignocellulosic feedstocks which includes wood or any other forest products which are broken down to synthetic gases primarily carbon monoxide and hydrogen. The feedstock is primarily oxidized or reformed with a gasifying agent. So, as I said before if we use air then its calorific value will be may be 4 or 5 megajoule per kg. If we do oxygen or if we provide oxygen then it will augment again if we provide steam then again further augmentation is possible. And of course, we can have different uh, feedstock for generation of producer gas. And in the reactor host of chemical reactions takes place. So, it may be carbon reacted oxygen will produce carbon dioxide and heat will be generated and then for gasification that is half of oxygen will be used because it is a partial oxidation it will be carbon monoxide. So, you can see the heat generation then H 2 hydrogen what is generated before will react with oxygen it will produce water vapor carbon monoxide reacts with oxygen it will produce carbon dioxide 
then carbon reacts with hydrogen it will produce methane carbon monoxide reacts with water vapor it will produce carbon dioxide and H2 this is known as sieve reaction and these all are exothermic reaction but these all are endothermic like carbon reacts with CO2 it will produce carbon monoxide then carbon reacts with H2O it will produce carbon monoxide and hydrogen and methane reacts with H2O it will produce carbon monoxide and hydrogen ok. So, these all reactions are taking place in a gasifier system ok and here you can see at what temperature these processes are taking place moisture removal will take place up to 200 degree C up to 600 degree C water vapor methanol and acidic acid tar will be removed and combustion reactions will be something here normally carbon dioxide H 2 O will produce and in a reduction what we will have is carbon dioxide and H 2 O. So, you can see this is a typical downdraft biomass gasifier where fuel is added from the top and gas is supplied from the sides. So, this is the gas flow ok and here what you can see this is the combustion part and normally what happens this is a inclined tube through which air is injected and we can control the amount of air flow through these channels because we need to promote gasification reaction. So, we do not want all the element to burn. So, insufficient oxygen has to be provided. So, we designate one term called equivalence ratio. So, anyway we will be discussing those aspects in the lecture when we discuss gasification exclusively for power generation and we will have reduction zone here and finally, we can produce syngas and that can be transported for thermal application as well as for electricity generation if we have engine generator set together. So, all the reactions what we have explained will take place in this reaction in this zone ok. So, these are the arrangements for measurement of temperatures if someone interested to see like how this temperature is varying from combustion to the drying zone that can be very easily investigated. So, this is a gasifier system. So, what we have in our lab it is a 10 kilowatt gasifier system and we have anaerobic digester is other side these are connected to the engine and we have optimized the performance of the engine and also the compression ratio at which we will get the maximum engine conversion as well as the emission reduction. So, this is the complete set of electricity generation from biomass resources. And also we have done some kind of work on the waste management. We have collected the campus waste including organic waste which is generated in hostels, then horticultural waste, paper waste and then cow dung and slurry. We mixed it and we produced this kind of briquettes and this is the setup where we can produce briquettes. So, it is it is something like about 60 to 80 kgs of small pellets this is somewhat like pellets ok. So, sizes are small. So, we call it as briquette machine, but normally we produce pellets and it can produce 60 to 80 kgs of pellets per hour. So, here our attempt is to utilize all kind of you no know, organic waste for generation of electricity. So, once we have these briquettes then we can use these briquettes in the downdraft gasifier for generation of producer gas and that gas has to be clean and cool before introducing to the engine and once it is introduced to the engine then from that we can generate electricity if we connect a generator set that replaces the diesel consumption by 85 percent. If we use this in a dual fuel engine otherwise you can use this technology directly in gas engine 
for power generation. Also, we are proposing an integrated approach to manage waste. So, it is something like we have kitchen waste, then rock out down, then horticultural waste. So, we can make briquettes or pellets which can be fed in the gasifier and cow dung and other waste we can use it in anaerobic digester from where we can produce biogas and from down drop gasifier we can produce producer gas and that goes to dual fuel engine and then we can produce electricity and from here we can produce very good fertilizer. So, this is an integrated approach for utilizing biomass for power generation in different routes. So, this kind of approach is always required for management of waste what we generate in day to day life. So, in summary we have discussed primarily on biomass energy scenario, then understanding of generation of electricity from biomass, also the different routes of biomass conversions. Also we have introduced the concept of waste management, also we have studied a very interesting integrated approach how to utilize biomass waste for electricity generation. I hope you got an overview of biomass conversion and its application. So, next coming classes exclusively we will be discussing about the biomass based power generation systems. Thank you very much for watching this video. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you.